Hello, Googleization Nation, and welcome to Beyond the Office, Building and Leading Remote Teams, a GGG Unleashed podcast with thought leader Bill Keller. I'm Ira Wolf. And I'm Jason Cochran. In each of Bill's episodes, you'll get the latest research, trends, and tips on remote work to build and lead cohesive teams around the world for the future of work. Let's begin. Hi, I'm Bill Keller, and welcome to Beyond the Office, Building and Leading Remote Teams. And on today's episode, we're very excited to have Kanal Setchin with us. And uh, he is uh, one of our team members in India, and uh, it's great to have you here today. Thanks, Bill. It's, It's nice to be on the show. Thanks so much for coming on board. And we'd love to find out, and as we talked about in previous episodes, really just about breaking down barriers, understanding what it's like to work with people from India, but also understanding what it's like for people in India to work for people in the US, understanding how we might be able to bridge that gap to be able to make and create more value on both sides of the equation. Because we're not just about taking, we're also about giving and making sure that this is a good relationship and a good deal for both sides of the equation here. And so it's great to have you here this morning. So can you start us off and tell us a little, little bit about yourself? Like uh, what's your role, current role right now and, and what do you do? Also a little bit maybe about your background, where you're from and uh, and we'll start out there. Okay. I, I'm a chartered accountant by profession and I completed my CA in 2002. So that's almost, you know, like 20 years ago. I'm from the north of the country. So for those of you do, who don't know, it, it's more towards probably the Taj Mahal. And because of my dad's job, I, I've lived a lot of places uh, both in India and outside the country. So I was able to understand, meet different kinds of people, different cultures. So that was a, a good learning experience for me. Now you were saying about chartered accountant, just to let people know uh, that might not be aware of what that is. That would be equivalent to a CPA here in the US. So a chartered accountant uh, is in India and also I believe in, in, in other parts around the world, uh, especially in England. Is that right? Yes, yes. It's the equivalent of a CPA in the US. And uh, uh, so I worked in different areas in audit and in accounts. So I was in uh, working in Australia for almost nine years. I started off as the Intel auditor and then I was working as a financial controller there. I came back to India for, for family reasons and then worked in a family business for some time. And currently I'm with Staffing Global uh, as uh, in, in the audit role. We have a global team here which manages the audit function for a couple of clients in the US. So basically I work for an American CPA firm in audit. And he does a does a great job there. And so some of your experience, you said you were in Australia for a while. You were actually in, if I remember right, Papua New Guinea. You were actually yeah. the controller for the Coca-Cola bottling plant there, if I remember correctly. Yes. Uh, it was an Australian company and owned by an Australian. And uh, we had about almost, I think, six or seven different nationalities from different nationalities, people working there. So I just got to you know interact with them, learn a lot from them. And uh, it, it was a good learning experience, it, and it, both professionally and personally. That's wonderful. And so my first question to you, and, and we're going to kind of get back to the question I didn't ask, is uh, how does the education and professional training in India influence your approach and work? But before we get to that, I, I want to just take one step back. This is a while ago because you, you're, you're kind of like me. Uh, high school was a long time ago. But you said you actually went to six different uh, high schools, but they were Catholic schools, correct? Uh, yes. Like I said, uh, because of my dad's job, uh, he was working for the government. So I had a chance to live in different cities throughout the country. And all the schools that I've studied in are were Catholic schools. Uh, some of them are missionary and you know the others were government funded. But the Catholic schools, uh, both in the north of the country and the south of the country. So, I mean, it, it was a different experience uh, from what I gather. Well, the only reason I was bringing that up is because I think a lot of people wouldn't be aware of that. Where a lot of people, because uh, Sachin can can speak uh, excellent English, and a lot of times parents want to send their kids to Catholic schools because that's where they're going to uh, learn English in a better way. And so I just bring that up as just kind of a, an interesting uh, point and segue as we're talking about education. So thanks for uh, talking about that. So going back, how does education and professional training in India influence your approach? Because you've seen people from all around the world. You work 
worked in different places, uh, whether it's in the U.S. remotely or in Australia or Papua New Guinea, and you've been to many places. How do you see that education in India affecting your ability to to be to bring value to the current your current position? I, I think you must be aware of it, uh, and to an extent, the the Indian education system it it is uh, it has a strong emphasis on you know uh, acad- academic excellence, and uh, people in India here place a lot of uh, significance on uh, academic achievements you know learning more but i think partly it's because of the indian culture where uh, the more you study the more uh, you know it's uh, it, it's a sign of success and because of that the focus is on uh, not only the technical knowledge but also on the different soft skills this results in uh, a very uh, attitude which be a very hard working and competitive attitude in india so ultimately goes down to uh, where you work and in your approach to work it, it plays a significant role and we've seen that you know we've seen we talked about in other episodes about the hard working culture but there is also huge emphasis especially in families you know keep on pushing in school you know learning more doing better and so that really shows up as far as their ability to really understand the subjects and so appreciate that so we're going to move on to another area that i've seen uh, really affect things as far as maybe a slight difference in the way uh, culture is perceived between india and in the us so can you tell us a little bit about hierarchy and respect for authority uh, how does that manifest itself in an indian work environment and how does that differ from an american work environment uh, in your opinion in, in most of the indian companies you see that there's there's a well defined structure a hierarchy and most of it is uh, you know like a pyramid so uh, employees are expect, expected to follow a chain of command and you know for each decision you have to follow a chain you have to report to your superiors each decision is is from the top down approach so apart from the hierarchy there's a strong emphasis on you know respect on, on the kind of language you use on 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 titles formal titles like sir or madam or when, when you address your uh, superiors so basically seniority is highly valued in the indian workspace and this is where uh, it differs from the you know the american context where you have a flatter hierarchy you have a flatter structure and there's more directness and openness in the american corporate world i would say so both have their advantages and disadvantages but then ultimately the american system i would say is more open and direct and that's what we find as well you know like he said so there there's advantages and disadvantages to to both but there is a difference in understanding that and how you kind of like interact and what your expectations are and making sure you're setting that expectations because he says uh, we typically have a flatter organizational structure and uh, that opens up some more opportunities like we were talking about in in other episodes perhaps to do more things and maybe make some more decisions on your own is that fair yes yes yeah. you're right so the reason i'm asking you some of these questions is because you've had such a, a broad experience in different cultures and so i'm talking about the role of feedback how important is that in the indian culture and how is that typically both given and received and then can you contrast that to what you've kind of seen from an american context so now feedback plays a crucial role in uh, the indian work culture because it's considered important both for your personal as well as your professional growth you know work culture here there is a strong emphasis on respect and also building strong relationships uh, with your peers with your bosses you know uh, with your colleagues in the office so uh, feedback in in the uh, follows this this hierarchical structure of authority whereas in the american context it's like it's direct is direct communication feedback is is more specific in the american context it's more tied to measurable results rather than you know relationships which you find in the indian context one of the things which i think is one of the major differences which i feel is in the american context feedback can be multidirectional you know it can be from you can you can give feedback to your bosses you can give feedback about your colleagues but in the indian context it's more you know top to bottom so i think uh, this is where the american feedback system it kind of tries to balance criticism as well and uh, you know positive reinforcement so it, it's uh, i think it's it's better that way and i appreciate that you know as far as we're trying to in this whole concept is understand 
not are we right, are you wrong, you know, are you right, are we wrong, but what's best and how do we move that forward? And so we're trying to really understand that. So understanding how that we, we talked about, you know, a lot of that feedback is going is one directional in more of the Indian culture. And that's obviously a broad generalization, but that's what I was hearing you say. And that really in the US context, we're seeing this go both ways, which is both can be beneficial but at the same time is it's something that you might need to work on to overcome if you're working with an Indian colleague who's not used to giving that type of feedback up the chain and which is really oftentimes what we want in a management role we want to understand you know where we can improve and how we can get better and we're expecting our teammates and the people that are working for us to be able to feed us some of that information up and so that can be difficult and something that sometimes we have to work to overcome to make sure that they understand that it it is okay. And oftentimes just telling somebody that one time is probably not going to be enough. Would you agree? Because it's so ingrained that most people wouldn't feel comfortable if I say, Hey, you can tell me what's going on. And then you'd be like, okay, I, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't always know what that, what that's like, because that's not part of, of the culture there. Is that fair? Yes. Yes. Uh, it's a bit different, but then, uh, I, I guess things are changing in some industries, like you mentioned. And there's been so much influence on both sides, you know, whether it's uh, Indians coming to the U.S. Or, or us going into India, you know, we're seeing that, you know, and, and we're talking about broad generalizations that hopefully will get us uh, closer to the truth here. So you kind of mentioned it in your previous uh, answer. Can you tell us a little bit of what kind of communication styles preferred in an Indian work culture? And, and again, how does that kind of contrast to what you see in the U.S.? You know, like I mentioned, because we have a hierarchy here in India and it ultimately affects the communication and the way you talk. So uh, you will find a lot of, you know, politeness, a lot of respect in official communication. Communication is also, for example, feedbacks. The Indian culture, they try to avoid confrontation. They uh, try to maintain harmony. They try to, you know, uh, sort it out thing among themselves. So that's a communication style which, which you find here. A lot of, you know, uh, respect, a lot of uh, uh, using formal titles and trying to follow the hierarchy instead of going and, for example, going and meeting your managing director directly. You know, you'll, you'll talk to your superior, he will talk to his superior and so on and so forth. And I think it boils down to the fact that there's a term, you know, saving face. So that's a very common Indian trait. So you, know, you try to avoid, you know, to sully someone's reputation or name. So you just, you, you try to maintain a balance. You, you try to save face in case of any conflicts, you know, just to maintain some kind of harmony. Because like uh, in, in the Indian culture, the relationships are valued a lot. And that's what you try to build even in a corporate world. And compared to the American, where, you know, you have a very direct and straightforward kind of communication. So uh, it's, it's more, result oriented it, it, it focuses more on your personal achievements than your relationships so that's a big difference between the two and i hear that word he he mentioned more direct where we see that and it's kind of contrasting because we had somebody on the show before and it says in american culture there's tends to be not as much pressure but then there's also this much more direct nature as far as our communication we're expecting the person to basically to put the pressure on themselves and at the same time as we're, we're a little bit more direct our communication style and in telling them and giving them feedback and expecting feedback in return and so just understanding some of these cultural differences in, in that need for harmony and i've thought about this a while because I, i've been to india before and this is something that's kind of a, an interesting thing as far as there's so many people there and they're so tightly packed together. I actually brought one of my team members over to the U.S. one time. We went to New York City, one of the most populous uh, cities in the in the country, and he looked around and says, where are all the people? <laughs> and uh, so I, I've often thought about that harmony aspect of it because they're so close together and have such tight-knit families. It's almost a necessity to keep that type of harmony, or you could have this kind of breakdown over a period of time. I don't know if that's actually the case, but it's something that I've thought about for a while. And so, you know, it's something that we see all the time that we have to kind of be careful on how we're approaching the problem. You know, while we want to be direct, we often want to make sure that they understand that that directness they might not be quite used to. And so that because if somebody was that direct in India, there would be a major problem. And 
that doesn't necessarily mean the same thing as far as in an American context. So just understanding how people approach the communication is really critical to making sure that you're communicating well. Would you agree? Yes, yes. So as we kind of uh, wrap this up, what are one or two pieces of advice you would give an American executive who might have some concerns or fears about bringing some, someone on overseas to work in their company? Do you have some some thoughts for them? In my experience, I, I think uh, that there's a lot of advantages to this. Number one is, of course, uh, uh, getting a lot of diversity in the organization, in, in, in your people, because once you have diversity in the, one, in the workplace, it just broadens your horizons it gives you more opportunities it gives you you know uh, it's easier for the organization to handle challenges differences and i think uh, in in my experience uh, when when i went to papua new guinea working for the australian company i found new people always brought in the best practices in anything so in any process in any department when you have people from different places we had filipinos we had new zealanders we had people from different countries working there so everybody gets the best practices from their region from their culture and that really helps the organization grow and of course it apart from the cost savings and you know the uh, the competitive edge the diversity and the loads of experience which everybody gets it's it's i mean it's, it's great i appreciate that you know, as far as diversity bringing new ideas and, and new ways of working. And when you can do that and harness the power of an incredible nation like India with, uh, you know, the most populous country on the earth, but have people with incredible work ethics and incredible minds. And if you're able to harness that and bring that into your company and both, you know, benefit from that and also at the same time is reciprocate in providing value to them on the other side with opportunities for them to grow. It is an incredible opportunity for both parties. And so we really appreciate uh, your time today. Thank you so much for coming uh, on our show, for sharing your knowledge and your wisdom with us. And, um, you know, we look forward to maybe talking with you again sometime. Thank you so much, Bill. It is a pleasure talking to you. Well, until next time on Beyond the Office, go out and build great remote teams. So if you'd like to learn more about remote staffing, feel free to message us for our free guide, The Seven Deadly Sins of Remote Staffing, and how to make sure that you don't commit them and you're successful in your remote hiring journey. That's it for today's episode. Thank you for tuning in and digging deep into what's ahead for the future of remote work. We'll be back next month with Bill for another episode. But until then, please visit Staffing Global's website for additional resources at staffdifferent.com. And remember, don't let the shift hit your plans.